So hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, John, for speaking at another event. It's great to have you back. So John Hodson is a speaker, entrepreneur, writer, and senior advisor to business owners. John has started and run seven companies, advised business executives in dozens of industries, and given hundreds of presentations and speeches. John formerly ran a business unit at Nordal Networks and is a founding partner at Business Transition Alliance. He works with business owners who are growing their business, exiting or stepping back from the day-to-day -day operations to enjoy the fruits of their labor. Thanks again for speaking today, John, and good luck with your presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Um, hello, everybody, and, and welcome to, to this event. Let me just switch you over to some slides here, and uh, we'll take you through what hopefully will be uh, 30 minutes of content that will uh, make some sense to you about this issue of building value and, um, and the times that we're in. Um, if we've learned anything from the last few uh, months, uh, I guess it's that we, we really need to step back and focus on, on what are the basic issues in, in, in business. And we've done some studying on it and, and working with our clients and at Business Transition Alliance, we work with, with companies that are going through some kind of transition, whether it's uh, uh, growing the business exponentially or, or whether it's uh, exiting it through a sale, uh, either to a, a group of people in the company or to third parties, um, or stepping back and just kind of enjoying the fruits of what they've worked on for the last few years. Um, so when we talk about transition, it covers all of those broad areas. Um, but what did 2020 teach us um, in terms of, of what any of those things, growing exiting or stepping back, uh, encompass? And really, uh, the bottom line is it got us to the point where we all need to focus on the fundamentals of value. And uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to break it down into these categories of uh, how, how has the pandemic impacted business value? Um, what is value? Big picture. Um, what are the top value drivers? And uh, this is an interesting conversation about what drives value in, in your company and, and companies in your sector. Um, what impacts value and where do I start or where do you start in terms of rebuilding that? Is this a good time to sell uh, your business? That may be something that's going through your mind in these days. And, and what should you do and where should you start if that's something you're thinking about is selling? And, and we'll get down to how can we help you if, if there's a, something that you, you need some help with. So let's get started. Um, how has the recent pandemic impacted value? Well, in getting to this, I wanted to talk to some people who are on the front lines here. And um, these are people we work with uh, fairly regularly. Colin Walker is a managing director at Crosby and Company and their M&A shop in, in Toronto. And, and this is what Colin has to say about it. And M&A hates uncertainty. And at the, when the pandemic hit, we saw a shift from a seller's market to a buyer's market. And valuations came down and they'll probably remain uncertain for some time. And financing is, is more difficult certainly from both the banks and from private lenders. And Colin went on to say that thoughtful preparation is critical. Uh, sellers need to improve the business and create the best ingredients to take it into an M&A process. So whether you're thinking of selling or whether you're not, the, the fundamentals of value need to be created. You need to improve the business and create the best ingredients in the business. And let's talk about, we're gonna talk about that what are these best ingredients uh, in this next half hour? I also spoke with Melanie Russell, and Melanie is the president of Kalex Valuations, and she in the business of the placing value on businesses. And um, uh, her comments were the, the fundamentals really will be no different. This is kind of in a COVID environment or post-COVID environment. And businesses will still be judged on how well you understand your business. How do you make money, essentially? and how clearly you can communicate your value. And, you know, obviously you need sound and believable projections going forward. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we go forward this afternoon. But coming back to her point here, how clearly can you communicate the value of your business? So that was some input from people who are close to this and on the front lines. So let's, let's talk a little bit about what value is. And, um, we look at it from a kind of holistic perspective with our clients and we often use this saying with them that you should be running your business like it's always for sale and you've probably heard that before and what does that mean 
it, it means that it's in the best shape. It's always, always in the best shape. And if you're doing the things, the basic things to keep this business running as profitably and as smoothly as you can. And in not, maybe not you're, think, you're not thinking about selling the business right away, but this is what you should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis, basis. So what is value? Well, business value is, is, is the sum of a bunch of parts. And it's all forms of value that determine the success and the saleability of the company. Both the success on a day-to-day -day ongoing basis, the operational day-to-day -day basis, and the saleability, the projection of uh, off into the future of selling the company. And, and, and it's more than just the economic value or the EBITDA or EBITDA with COVID in, in there now, as, as we're seeing, uh, but it's a list of things that drive value. It's your employees. What do they bring to the value? Your customers, the relationships you have with customers and suppliers. Um, do you have a unique business model? And how valuable is that? Intellectual property, is, that, is there IP in your company? Um, the reputational value, your brand. I want to come back to this because we'll talk about it uh, in our, in our, in our going to take you through a, a little bit of a case study that talks about that. And the managerial value, your, the people of your business, the employees are of certain value, but those managers who drive decision making and things like that, what's the value they bring? And societal value, companies today are being looked at for what they give back to society. So these are some of the things beyond just the financial and economic value of the business that you need to be thinking about. So let's talk about value drivers and what are they? And for each business might be a little bit different, but surprisingly not, not too much. Um, there are some things that it boils down to, especially in these times and what we're going through and what we're coming out of. Um, what we've looked at, um, here's how it breaks down. You see that the top value driver is still that strong management team. This is what's going to bring value, retain value, add value to the company, is how engaged are those managers? What are they doing to bring new opportunities to the company? How are they helping you with the top and bottom line of running this business? And that's where you should really need to be focused on is that management team. And again, we'll talk about this in, in, a, in a case study in a few seconds. Um, Stable cash flow, back to Melanie's comment earlier. Uh, yeah, if you don't have the predictable and believable projections of cash flow, um, then and it can't be cash flow based on historic information, but on future projections, um, then you're not going to have the value that you need to get the attention that you'll want for, for your company. Whether you're thinking of selling today or whether you aren't, um, at some point, you're going to have to deal with that. Similarly, revenue trends need to be believable, positive, based on new opportunities. Strength of the brand. Does your brand reflect where you're going in these new times? Or does it reflect where you've been as an old traditional thinking company? Um, you, you need to make sure that you've looked carefully at your brand in these times and said, are we saying everything that we can say about ourselves to position us for the new reality, the new future? If not, what should we be changing? What should we be changing in, in that brand? The way people think. Because brand is really only what people think about you. And that's what you got to be concerned about. To think you're moving forward. Um, the condition of your assets. If you're in, in a, business, a business that assets are a big part, you really have to make sure those, can be, those assets are in top shape. Documented procedures and processes. Um, if you decide you do want to leave the business, either exit it or just step back from it, how well will that company run without you at the helm every day? You have to have those documented processes in place so that somebody looking at this business from the outside can say, I can come in and run that business because it's all on paper and it's all going to make sense to me the second day I'm on the job. So that's key. Growth potential, again, based on where you're going, uh, not where you've been. Um, are you taking and looking at your the last year's projection and just building on it? Or are you clearly visioning where this business is going to go and building some potential uh, around that? Uh, diversification of customer base. I mean, it's always important to make sure you're not overly dependent on one or two key clients. So this is what we see in terms of um, the market now that we're in. And how does all of this change? Um, how you should focus on your... We'll come to that in a, in a couple of seconds. But this is where you should be looking. So 
what impacts value and, and, and where, where do you start if, if there are things you need to be doing to kind of change that or address those valuations, where do you actually get started? Well, I've, I've built what I call a value framework and I've been working with this for a couple of years now. And this value framework is all of the things that are out there that are gonna impact value. No, no matter what business you're in and when, what sector and what industry, um, there are things going on out there that are gonna impact the value of the business. And at, this, at the big outer rim of this, uh, this value framework, it's what I call the macro environment. These are, these are the big things, the economy, regulation, disasters, and things that are out there that you really can't do all that much about, but you need to be aware but these are having putting pressure on the value of your business. And as those things shift like they have in the last you know, 12 months, disasters, um, have, that's obviously put an impact on the economy. And these are big picture macro environmental issues. Can you do much about it? Not a lot, but you can do things with, to your business to make yourself a little bit more resilient in, in times like this. Let's talk about what's a little closer to home in this value framework and it's the things that are right around you it's the market environment your competitors your customers your suppliers and it's all about the relationships that you have with these people do you have strong client relationships are you susceptible to price changes if your if your competitors decide to make a change do you have to respond and what impact is that going to have on cash flow and on margins and all of the things that pricing drives so you need to be, these are things that you need to be thinking about and they're things that have, again, an impact on your value. But what's the center of all of this? This is what I call the micro environment. And this is the strategy you have, the people you have, the, the culture that, that works inside your company, those routines, those processes that are all systematized and documented. Those are the things that are at the center of the business. And this is where you can start when it comes to building value at this micro environmental level. What do I mean by that? Well, your business strategy as an example. Um, these are some of the capabilities on the left-hand side of this slide that you have and the actions that you can take to start in building up that value. It has your business strategy been rethought to reflect where you're going in, in with this business and doesn't isn't overly reliant on where you've been on your history. Are your sales plans aligned with where this new direction is gonna take you? Are your employees pay, playing a key role in developing this new direction? Are they engaged in that? Are they coming to work every day with new ideas? Are your processes that relate to this new direction, are they well-defined, are they written down? Are your performance metrics aligned for each employee aligned with the goals of the business so that every employee knows that every day when they're working on their job and they're being measured on what they do, that's important because it helps this company take one step closer, get one step closer to its goals. And are your operational efficiencies, are they all working based on this new direction? Or again, are they over-reliant on the way things used to be? So these are the things that you can do right away that you can impact directly to start building value in your company. That's where you start. I've mentioned a case study that I want to take you through. It's a client we've been working with for several years and they're an engineering consulting firm. And um, about five years ago, when we started looking at this with this client, they had some challenges. They wanted to grow the business as the owners prepared to step back. And as I say, this is a snapshot of the company about um, maybe five years ago. And their challenges were how to grow this business when 96% of the revenue was coming from the owners. Three partners, strong relationships with clients, good reputations and driving 96% of the revenue. How do you step away from a company like that? And the senior managers, is, these are strong, strong managers, good product ma project managers, but they weren't engaged in the development of revenue or in the development of relationships with clients. And they had some regulatory and, and economic, remember that big ring on the, on the framework, on the outer ring? They were, they were driven, some of the value was driven down in this business because it was, you know, there were regulations that impacted some of the things that they did. The economy had been tough on some of their clients. And so these are things that were compressing this company at this time about five years ago. They had no real marketing expertise. They had to kind of market their way out of this. 
And um, they, they had established competition that were much bigger than them, five, ten times bigger. This is a company of about 30, 35 employees, so a small company, but, but yet substantial in terms of the clients. They make the clients all across North and South America. And, and, but their services weren't differentiated in terms of them being any different or any better than some of the bigger uh, competitors that they had. So where do you start? Guess what? We started at that micro environmental level with this client and said, how can we help you to start building out the value of this business so that those partners can now start to step back from it? And we started with the strategy to people and all the things at the center of the business. Specifically, I interviewed a dozen of their clients. And this goes back about five years ago, as I say. And we asked them questions like, why do you deal with this company? There's other, other companies you could be dealing with, yet you deal with this company. Well, they gave us some very interesting input on why they're dealing with them. And surprisingly, it wasn't all about price and things that they thought. Then we did a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats analysis with the key staff. So we brought together the external perspective from what the clients thought with the internal perspective of what, of what the employees felt they had. And we started to build out some value propositions. And at the same time, we were giving the employees a little bit of a marketing education of changing uh, what they thought marketing was from a dark art to a bit of a science and helping them build out their own value proposition for what they thought the strengths and unique value was of this company. And through that, we developed a brand differentiator, something that allowed us to talk about this business in a way that was different from other companies. And we built this out and built some unique language around this, which we built onto their website and other marketing materials. And essentially what we did is we changed the conversation. So we were now talking about value instead of talking about price or servicing or the things that everybody else was talking about. We started talking about the value that we brought to clients and how we helped them do a better job. And that was a very interesting dynamic for them. About say three, four, Four years later, where are we at with this company? The brand awareness has increased fairly dramatically based on this little differentiator that we created. The revenues have continued to increase. They're increasing by 15, 20% year over year. Next year is going to be a great year, but this year. Here's the exciting part, though. The staff is now generating in excess of 75% of the total revenues. That's huge going over a four-year period from where they were. And they've started through the development of this market disruptor to sell based on their differentiated value, as opposed to the thinking that they had of how good they were at a certain task. They're not talking about the value that they bring to clients. And as a result, they're getting happier clients and they're attracting new personnel who like this model and want to be associated with it. So what did this company do uh, over the last 12 months um, as opposed to sitting back and just waiting for this to pass and waiting for things to go back to normal? We worked with them to develop a series of videos that featured the senior management team and them explaining this unique value proposition and what this meant. And this is at a time when people were kind of wondering, what's, where's this world going and what are we going to do? And these people are talking about value and, 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 and helping people make decisions. It was a very positive kind of direction to take. And the managers were looking for ways to tell their, to tell their story in different ways, which includes uh, education. They teach a course on it. And they're teaching one, in fact, next week, uh, sorry, next month at an a, a, a industry conference. And as a result, as I say, they're getting you know, a reputation for this, and they are attracting some new, very smart people who want to work with them as well. So in summary, in this company, Enco, um, the management team had became really engaged through this process and started generating revenue and, and, and maintaining client relationships. The revenue trends start starting to really solidify, sort of solidify and move up. Um, and the, the brand has become very strong and well starting to become much more well known around this differentiator that we created, a future looking brand. And uh, it's got some very positive growth potential. The bottom line is the owners are now in a place where they can start their rekindle their, their ideas of moving forward with their own transition plans. So hopefully that gives you an idea of, of how you can put into play some of these uh, concepts of getting your staff involved and, and making sure
the growth and, and, and moving forward story. Um, we get asked this question a, a, a little bit <laughs> these days um, from people, is this a good time to sell my business? And uh, well, I've got the answer. It depends. Um, and I know that's not the answer you wanted to hear, but it depends on what we have just talked about. How sound is your micro environment? Have you been doing the work on building your business strategy and your business plans and getting your employees engaged, making sure they're part of this new story that you're telling? And have you, you know, in these in the new process, have you defined some new processes and procedures that is going to help you get there? So it's not just talk, but you've written it down and it's starting stuff you talk about and work on. Um, have you, you know, changed the performance metrics? Uh, to align with this new direction that the company is going so that you can get those operational efficiencies and people will really truly be engaged. So, I mean, those are the, that's where you need to be uh, focused and starting to rebuild. And if you do that, you're not going to impact the economy and you're not going to impact the regulation and things that are surrounding you, but it's going to put you in a lot better shape as it relates to competing with other clients or competing with the competitors with attracting new clients and solidifying relationships uh, with suppliers that is going to all strengthen that business. So you're going to be prepared for any downturn. If you are doing that work, if that's something you're focused on, then this is indeed a good time to sell your business. As you probably know through what you're reading out there, there is a lot of cash sitting on the sidelines. There are people looking to buy good businesses. I had a call last week from an individual and he and his partner are looking They've got cash, they've got experience, they're talking to M&A people, and they want to buy a business. They want to buy a well-run small business. And that's where your opportunity is. If you're doing the job and doing the work on building out your business, then it's a good time to do it. I also want to just, as we kind of start to wrap this up, I want to leave you with this thought. Um, and, and this is something, again, you've probably done some reading on or you're seeing something on. Um, it's about the tsunami of baby boomers retiring uh, over the next few years. I mean, you can't pick up a, an article or a newspaper without, or a newspaper, who reads it, uh, online without uh, seeing something that talks about this. And I, I've done a little bit of research on this, and I just want to throw these numbers out at you just to give you a sense of what's going on here. Uh, this is a number um, that I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, this is the number of small and medium-sized businesses in Canada. 1.2 million. Now, this number is about a year old uh, from StatsCan, so it's it's going to modify a little bit. The next time they do an audit on this, um, you're going to see some shifts. Um, but at this point, um, it's in, it's going to be in and around that range. So there's 1.2 million uh, companies. That represents 99.8 percent of all of the companies in Canada. Small and medium-sized companies represent almost 100 percent. There's about 2,000 large companies. And as stats can um, identify small as one employee to 99 employees, and medium is 100 employees to 499, and above is 500 employees and above. And so the majority of the workforce, and certainly the huge majority of companies, are in that small to medium category. So what? What does that all mean? Um, let me add another stat to this for you. Um, 47%, which is a number that the Canadian Federation of Independent Businesses is put out there in a study they did um, a year ago, 47% uh, of those owners are planning to exit over the next five years. If you, if you move that out over 10 years and go five to 10 years, that number becomes 72%. So you look at that and you say 72% of the small business, small medium-sized business owners are planning to exit over the next 10 years. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. I did the math. And that says that if you add those bunch of numbers together, that's somewhere between 565,000 and 865,000 businesses over the next five to 10 years are gonna be in transition. So what does that mean to the business owner today? It means that business owners are going to be faced, or people who want to buy businesses rather, the next generation of buyers are going to be faced with a lot of choice. They're going to have a huge number of businesses that they can buy. And we're seeing it now with people who are calling us and saying, we've got cash, we want to buy a business. And uh, what's going to happen as the number of businesses 
who are uh, owners who are exiting start to put those businesses up for sale as well. It's going to mean that buyers are going to have huge choices and owners really need to be prepared for that by having the best grown business being the option that uh, buyers are looking for as a well-run business. So in the last few minutes we've got, let's, let's talk about what your, your situation is and, and, and what you could be or should be doing right now. Now, hopefully you've picked out of this conversation we've had so far um, that you've got to start getting some clarity. If you don't already have it, you've got to get some clarity on what those specific value drivers are in your business. Um, what is it that you do that is unique and that, that people kind of know you for and they keep coming back to you for? Are you taking full advantage of what those value drivers are? And are you working on those? And are you taking those and, and ideally building strategies that will help you build value around those, additional value around those actual drivers that people know you for? So these are the first steps that you can be taking, getting some clarity on them, and then identifying some strategies that you can put in place to build on those. And then beyond that, you can start to implement some measurable initiatives that will build value with the emphasis here on measurable. And remembering the old adage that you can't manage what you don't measure, um, you wanna be able to sure, make sure that you can manage the things that will increase the value in your company. And though that's where you should be starting. Those things are at that micro environmental level of your company, things that you can be starting to work on. You know, here's a saying that you've heard, uh, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, but the second best time is still now, is still today. And, I mean, if you take the opportunity to, to look at how you can rebuild uh, some of your business uh, issues that may have gotten a little bit off the rails in the last year, uh, now is the time to, to do that. Um, where do you start? Um, we work with clients by taking them through a, a diagnostic tool that we have. It's a 17 point diagnostic that takes into account uh, the impact of, of what COVID may have had on your business. And the chart really breaks down into all aspects of your business. On the left hand side there, that's all areas of the business, whether it's from business ownership, like with the situation of who owns the company, management uh, capabilities, engagement of staff and, and uh, key uh, managers, um, marketing, sales, your financial situation, um, future proofing. Have you got a plan for carrying this business on into the future and on and on. And there's, as I say, there's a 17, a list of 17 things that we have a conversation with owners about and stuff, how we can maybe help them identify what their priority should be. And then as you look at how we fill it out, um, and you go through each of them and have the conversation, it takes a couple hours, and uh, we identify on the left-hand side, those are things that, you know, they can, they can fix or they're, they're in good shape. In the center, the things they're working on anyway, and they, they don't really um, need some advice on that. But on the right-hand side, where you've got five or six things that pop out, I mean, those are the things that are key to driving the value of the business and maybe things that they're not really putting the attention into developing. That's where maybe a set of outside eyes can help them say, here's what you got to be focused on. And we'll come back to them with a plan around uh, how to develop that and how to roll that out to helping them initiate some of those opportunities. Now, as I say, this is a complimentary uh, service. We don't, um, we, we just want to get uh, to understand how companies work and we want companies to understand how we work. So we offer this as a, on a complimentary basis to kind of start that relationship off. So we can we can have by bringing some clarity to those value drivers and identifying those and putting plans in place. Um, we can also help focusing on the strategies to build those values out. And, but also as demonstrated in that um, in the, uh, case study that we were, we really work hands on to implement those strategies and, and help develop that so they can actually come, come together. So that's what we do, and, and if it's of interest to you and you think that you'd like some help, by all means, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, it's at jhodson at btahelps.com, and uh, you can take some time on our website and, and just find out exactly what we do. We'd be glad to uh, offer that uh, uh, complimentary diagnostic tool for you. 
so that's it. And uh, thank you very much for for uh, watching and listening today. And, and hope you got some value out of, out of all of this. Thanks very much. Hi, John. Can you hear me? Hi, Alex. Hi. I just wanted to come back on and say thanks again for your presentation uh, and for speaking at another event. It's good to have you as always. Um, and I saw that you put your contact information up. Um, do you maybe just want to type it in chat here just in case people didn't get a chance to write down? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'll have a look at that. Okay, okay. great. Thank uh, you. Bye. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Take care. You too. Bye.